Our next session is on clinical characteristics and hepatitis C treatment outcome among people who use drugs in an HIV cohort of Manipur, India. To examine some of the intricate vulnerabilities of key population and highlight the confidence of integrated model of care from HIV patients going infected with hepatitis C, I would like to invite Ms. Preeti Guran, who is the Epidemiology Activity Manager with MSF in Manipur. Welcome, Ms. Guran. You may start a presentation now. I'm Preeti Gurung, and today I'm here to present a study on clinical characteristics and hepatitis C treatment outcomes among people who use drugs in HIV cohort of Manipur, India. HIV and hepatitis C virus infections share common behavioral risk factors such as IV drug use, men having sex with men, female sex work. HIV and hep C co-infected and key populations like above have limited access to medical care due to stigma, marginalization, and criminalization, especially of these key populations, high dropout rate due to active drug use and mental distress, comorbidities such as tuberculosis, hepatitis B, or HIV, and reported poor treatment outcome, uh, treatment uptake and, up and outcome of this treatment. Now, MSF provides integrated care for people with HIV co-infected with hep C through integrated model of care for such patients. Now, there are basically five pillars to this integrated model of care. Central to this care model of care is early treatment with DAAs, which stands for directly acting antivirals for hep C treatment. The second pillar is treatment of HIV with antiretrovirals. These are also supported by third pillar that is diagnosis and treatment of comorbidities prior to treatment initiation of uh, hepatitis C virus infection. Then comes access to harm reduction services. Uh, for example, if a patient is IV drug user, then we first try to stabilize their behavior through either OST, that is opioid substitution therapy, or needle syringe exchange program to reduce their uh, risky behavior for uh, rapid transmission of hepatitis C virus. And fifth pillar is psychological care provided uh, through screening, treatment, and counseling for such patients. Therefore, we can see that hep C care program is tailored to suit the needs of key populations and also considers known determinants of poor outcomes. Now, this integrated hep C care is provided by MSF through three clinics, MSF clinics in Manipur. You can see in the figure the red highlighted portion, which is Manipur, a northeastern state of India. And there are three uh, clinics operated by MSF through which care is provided. Manipur is a place with low socioeconomic context and chronic low intensity conflict. Hepatitis C program has been adapted to new evidences, drugs, and diagnostics. The objective of this study is to describe patient characteristics and outcomes of integrated hep C care program. Such analysis has informed and will inform adaptation of program to improve uptakes and outcomes. Now, we've had some interim analysis for the program before and adaptations made accordingly. Let me quickly take you all through the program adaptations made in the past. So it all started in October 2014 when we started giving uh, treatment for hep C HIV co-infected patients through PEG interference, liver cirrhosis was uh, the main factor through which patients were triaged for uh, treatment first. A year later, uh, DAAs were introduced and DAA pig interference regime were used, especially for, uh, I mean, um, first for patients who had advanced liver fibrosis. Then came um, DAAs with more availability uh, and Patients were started uh, being treated irrespective of any stage of liver fibrosis and they were genotype specific. 
and currently since October 2018 onwards uh, we have pan-genotypic DA regime uh, for treatment of all patients as early as possible. This shows this slide shows the drugs used in the program for co-infected patients for HIV and TB methods. Uh, this study has descriptive analysis of Hep C care cohort, which is a subset of a larger prospective cohort study. HIV Hep C co infected patients of three MSF clinics is, constitutes the study cohort, and the observation was made between October 2014 and October 2019. Demographic, biological, clinical characteristics, treatment, and outcome are the variables of interest. Central tendency or average and frequencies have been described across relevant patient groups and strata. Ethics clearance has been achieved from ethics review boards of MSF Geneva and Regional Institute of Medical Sciences in Falmi, Manipur. Now the next three slides, through the next three slides, let me show you how the hepatitis C and HIV co-infected cohort was formed and the flow of the patient's treatment right from enrollment till an outcome is gained. So this is our HIV cohort, the MSF HIV cohort, which was first screened for, uh, for antibody, hep C antibody. And among those who were positive, they were tested for uh, hepatitis C and uh, viral load. And a viral load, those who had viral load positive were uh, considered to be co-infected with hepatitis C virus as well and they were enrolled into the program. Then uh, not all could be initiated on, uh, on the first attempt of treatment itself because we had other outcomes prior to treatment initiation or even first attempt of treatment initiation which uh, these outcomes uh, included spontaneous resolution, ineligible for treatment, loss to follow up, or even death. Now, in the first stage or first attempt of treatment initiation, we treat the patient based on their history of, of hep C treatment before. Either the patients were treatment naive or treatment experienced, or their uh, liver uh, conditions, liver uh, status, patients are treated for three months or six months. Now, after the patient's treatment is over, we wait for 12 weeks and perform a viral load test for hepatitis C after 12 weeks for SVR12. SVR stands for sustained virological response, and since it is done after 12 weeks, we call it SVR12. If the SVR12 SVR results show that hep C viral load is less than 10 copies or not detectable, then the patient is cured or otherwise the patient has failed the treatment. So accordingly, we get two outcomes, either cure or failure. So this is the first ever outcome for the first ever treatment initiation. Uh, other negative outcomes such as loss to follow-up and death are again uh, no, um, observed after treatment initiation or during the treatment period. Now among the treatment failure, we try to retain them and reinitiate them on another regime of DAAs. So these patients get first retreatment. Again, uh, after they finish their treatment, we do their SVR12 and get either cured or failure as their results. And uh, again, analysis, uh, sorry, adverse outcomes uh, of LFU and death were recorded after every treatment initiation. Now, among the patients who got failure, at the time of analysis, both there were two of them and both of them were awaiting retreatment. So the patients even went for third time retreatment. So in this way, the study outcome in our program is analyzed at two levels. One is per protocol and one is 
overall cohort outcome or we say program outcome. So per protocol means once the patient is started on treatment and given a particular regime, we call it a protocol and then the outcome of that protocol is called protocol outcome, which can be either cured or failure. And overall cohort outcome or the program outcome can consist of other outcomes such as loss to follow up disease or uh, transfer out or even cure um, at any stage of treatment either after treatment or prior to treatment initiation. So we have two outcomes it is either protocol outcome or program outcome. Now moving on to the results section we have four slides which describe the characteristics of the cohort and treatment outcomes of those who had an outcome until October 2019 when the analysis was done. Now, uh, this, this table for the next four slides consists of demographic and clinical characteristics of the cohort. There are basically four columns. The first one is uh, of characteristics, uh, which talks about various uh, demographic or clinical characteristics of the patients. Second column shows the distribution of all the patients who had been, all the 495 patients who had been enrolled in HIV hep C co-infected cohort and their distribution against each characteristic. Third column talks about patients who had exited the cohort prior to treatment initiation. Uh, such as loss to follow up or death or spontaneous resolution or ineligible for treatment. So those were the, the patients who exited prior to treatment initiation. And the last or the fourth column consists of patients who exited the cohort after treatment initiation. And even after treatment initiation, we have two types. One is patients who exited the cohort as cured and another is patients who exited the cohort without cure. Now, without cure may include failure and waiting for retreatment or uh, loss to follow up or death. Now, since this table could be little extensive and cumbersome, I would like to take you through only the highlighted boxes which uh, talk about the important findings. So uh, the first one is the age. So so the so the cohort was uh, quite young young with an average age of thirty nine years, and it was seen that age was uh, was statistically significant with the with the treatment outcomes as cured or without cure. Uh, we found that young that older age group that is thirty five to forty five years of age were patients were more likely to exit the cohort as cured compared to younger ones who were around 24 to, uh, to 42 years of age. Then uh, males were mostly dominant in the cohort consisting of 77 percentage of the entire cohort but uh, gender or sex was not uh, found to be associated with uh, treatment outcome. Then drug use status was uh, associated, statistically associated with uh, with treatment outcome. We could we can see here that we had active users. Fifteen percentage of the entire cohort were active users. That means they had been using drugs at the time of treatment initiation or at least. A year within the treatment initiation. Active plus past users we have constituted around 66 percentage of the entire cohort. So around two thirds had of the around two thirds of the uh, cohort had ever used drugs. However, when we compare this with the treatment outcome, we could see that those patients who had never used drugs were more likely to exit the cohort without a cured status and this uh, association was was uh, statistically significant coming to social uh, characteristics 
imprisonment history was the most prevalent social uh, history with around 14 percentage of the cohort uh, reporting imprisonment history coming to the clinical characteristics uh, almost 70 percentage of all the cohort um, patients had uh, stage 1 hiv uh, infection uh, genotype we had around we had three types of hepatitis c virus genotype circulating in the cohort that is 1 3 and 6 failure appeared to be more likely in group in genotype 3 and genotype 6 compared to 1 but this was not statistically significant sorry by failure i mean uh, exiting the cohort without a cured status it could uh, account for failure or loss to follow up or death then uh, liver cirrhosis uh, around 15 percentage of the patient's entire cohort had uh, liver cirrhosis and it was seen that 30 percentage of the patients who exited without cure had cirrhosis of liver but uh, the test of association needs to be done between liver status and outcome of outcome treatment outcome in regression model and treatment with interferon also did not have a higher frequency of failure compared to DAAs. Now this is a stacked bar chart where we can see that the y-axis shows the uh, shows the percentages of the outcomes whereas the x-axis shows the uh, the subset of the cohort that we are talking about. So one is uh, only the number of patients who had first initiation and outcome after first attempt of treatment and the upper one talks about the, f the cohort as a whole. The green uh, areas, green shaded areas uh, represent cured status. The red ones uh, represent failure. Uh, similarly, brown and black ones uh, represent loss to follow-up and deceased accordingly. So we can see if we talk about patients who had an outcome after first initiation, around 87% of them had status as cured. Whereas uh, if we come to the entire program for the full cohort, if we see, then those patients who exited the program as cured plus patients who had spontaneous resolution both of them make 85 percentage of the patients the remaining two percentage can be accounted by those patients who were lost to follow up or death mainly before the treatment initiation so this can indicate that if we try to capture these patients and try to put them under daa as early as possible then death or other adverse events uh, can be avoided in this patient, uh, group of patients who have these outcomes prior to treatment. So, yeah, out of the entire HIV cohort, we had around 22.2 percentage of patients who had positive Hep C viral load. This is another finding: uh, active drug users likely to fail the first initiation compared to non-users but more likely to exit cohort as cured with successive treatment compared to non-users and this association was statistically significant. Now we have already spoken about uh, outcomes after first initiation. Outcomes after second initiation 80% of them were cured, 10% were failed who were waiting for retreatment again and 10% were lost to follow up and no death. HIV and OST status among this uh, group of patients. One patient progressed HIV stage during treatment. Only 0.02 percentage patients discontinued HIV treatment during Hep C treatment, but 88 percentage of them, however, did get cured of Hep C virus infection. 34 percentage of past drug users had access to OST or had accessed OST prior to initiation of Hep C treatment and among them 88 percentage 
continued taking OST during treatment until they had treatment outcome. 30% of active drug users continued drug use during hep C treatment, but 86% of them continued needle syringe exchange program throughout hep C treatment period. This ensures that they do not, they practice safe behavior, um, behavior patterns. Let me summarize the findings. Average age of our cohort was 39 years old. Older people were more likely to be cured than younger people. Males were above three-fourths of the cohort. Drug use, active or past, were reported by two-thirds of the cohort. Imprisonment history was more prevalent. Risk factor, social risk factor. There were three types of hepatitis C virus or genotypes that, that we see that was observed in the cohort. Liver cirrhosis was, found, was observed in 15% of the cohort. We could diagnose, sorry, we could initiate treatment among 88% of those diagnosed. And among those, 85% of the patients exited the program as cured. This, is com this finding is comparable with cohort outcomes in different parts of the world. Coming to discussion, now MSF follows a patient-centered a patient model of care, like uh, I had already explained the model of care that uh, MSF follows. This helps us, this has helped us to address the influences of treatment outcomes, such as IV drug use. Key populations, mainly IV drug use, were two users were two-thirds of the HIV hep C cohort. Nearly half of the patients had significant liver fibrosis. Now, with repeated and successive treatment outcomes, around 87% of the HIV hep C co-infected patients were cured of hep C infection. We can see, we could see that in clinical trial settings before, 75 to 95% of HIV hep C co-infected patients were cured of hep C, treat, uh, hep C infection when treated with DAAs. Compared to that, our program had 85% of patients cured of hep C infection, but we also can consider the fact that we take care of patients who, are, who fall under this key populations who, who have the higher chance of ha getting negative outcomes such as loss to follow or death, yet 80, sustaining uh, a success at 85% is is comparable with other other intervention or other outcomes. Uh, we could not find any association between treatment outcomes and hep C genotypes or HIV stage. Uh, all patients were on ART when they were treated with DAAs. Early DAA initiation may prevent death and loss to follow up. Like I mentioned before, that um, around 2% of the patients were had this kind of outcomes prior to treatment initiation. So ensuring that early that DA is initiated as early as possible, we may even prevent these deaths and loss to follow. Poor outcomes in active drug users are attributed to liver fibrosis, poor treatment adherence, reinfection, and morbidities. Hep C treatment in HIV co-infected populations decreased risk of all-cause mortality by 50% over five years. Providing Hep C treatment to key populations is essential to break transmission cycle in local populations, which contributes to microelimination of hepatitis C virus. This study did not analyze program and clinical factors associated with treatment outcomes. Take-home message: What was the problem? Key population or what is the problem? Key population are main drivers of hepatitis C virus infection. Key population denied, they are denied access to hepatitis C treatment due to fear of negative outcomes. PLHIV co-infected with HIV, uh, with HCV leads to rapid liver failure and death. What are the proposed solutions? We have to break microcirculation of hepatitis C virus among this key population by providing them early and easy access to DAAs.
uh, hep C treatment has been provided to individuals based on social uh, parameters such as if someone belongs to a key population and has high risk behaviors then they are denied because of stigma and and marginalization uh, so these are social exclusions or if someone does not have health insurance then they might also be excluded from hep C treatment but providing treatment to the clinically worse rather than socially worse or marginalized can prevent death prior to treatment initiation. So providing immediate access to treatment for all for all those who are diagnosed with hep C irrespective of social uh, status or social criteria is essential. Through integrated model of care, we have been able to take care of social vulnerabilities and comorbidities and adaptation of strategies based on resources available has helped us minimize mortality due to inaccess to treatment. In conclusion, in Manipur, over half of HIV hep C co-infected patients were either active or past IV drug users. MSF's patient-centric uh, patient model of care provided hep C treatment to 88% of HIV hep C co-infected patients. And among those who had treatment initiated, 87% of the patients got cured. Integrated care model tailored to suit the needs of key population can successfully treat hep C in a significant proportion of patients. Further analysis of factors associated with treatment success is warranted. Thank you.